So what I want to quickly overview here is how we actually continue on and start finding equations for cortex. So what we can see here is we've got a couple of cortex with the axes intercepts given to us. And what the axes intercepts tell us, particularly the x-axis, is the type of root that we might have with each of these cortex. So for example, when it cuts through here, we've just got a linear factor. When it has this stationary point of inflection, we've got a cubic linear factor. Where if it just touches the x-axis like we've got here, what we've got is a repeated linear factor. Now one factor that isn't part of these two graphs is if we've got that real flat bottom one or that flat top one, where we've got that quadruple linear factor that we've got to just keep in mind that you might come across. Now with each of these you follow a similar process that we did with our quadratics and our cubics when we are finding them in that we start by representing just a general cubic polynomial where we include the factors that we've got. Now because this is cutting at negative 1, the first factor that we've got is going to be x plus 1, just the opposite sign of what we had here. And because we've got this stationary point of inflection at this other point, so there's x minus 4 here, what that stationary point of inflection indicates is this is going to be a cubed linear factor here. And now what we've got is this general function for all cubic polynomials that cut through at those two points in that manner. But I need to define this value of a. So to do that I need to substitute another point that's not one of the roots I've already used. Now it's given us the, uh, the y-intercept here. So what that tells us is when x is equal to 0, our y is equal to 16. So that's the point that I can substitute in. So 16 will equal a, 0 plus 1 is going to be 1, 0 take 4 is negative 4, and that will be cubed here. So when I expand that out, this will be negative 4 cubes, negative 64, so it'll be negative 64a here. So my a is going to be negative uh, 16 over 64, which means that 16 divides into them both, so therefore my a is going to be equal to negative 1 over 4, like that. So to find the final equation here, I just substitute my a value back into here. So what that means for my final equation is my y is equal to negative 1 quarter uh, x plus 1 and x minus 4 all cubed. Now if I think about it for a moment, my a should be negative because I've got this overall concave type shape. It opens up downwards. So that does seem like a logical answer here. Now for the next graph I've got here, you really follow the same sort of steps. The very first step is to identify the types of roots that you've got. So I know that's going to cut here and cut here, so they're just going to be linear factors. And it touches here, so that's going to be a repeated root. So when I look at my function in just that general form, I'm going to have this x plus 3 for this root, uh, x plus 1, but because it's touching that'll be a squared, and then my x take 3 for the final root over there. And now I need to substitute a point in again. So the point that I'm going to substitute is the y-intercept because that's what's given to us. So when my x is equal to 0, my y is equal to negative 3 here. So my y of negative 3 should equal a. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 0 take 3 is negative 3. So when I expand this out now, uh, 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, it will be negative 9a, like that. So a will be negative 3 over negative 9, which will just simplify to a positive 1 third, like that. So now I've found my a, I just substitute that back into up here. So my function here is y equals 1 third, uh, x plus 3, x plus 1 all squared, and x take 3 like that. Now, once again, I can look at my a value here. It is positive. My uh, cortic I've got is opening upwards. So that does seem reasonable for this uh, cortic graph that I've got here. But basically the steps are you identify what types of x-intercepts that you have and you represent the equation in just that factorised form with the type of uh, x-intercepts that you've got. 
Once you've got that, you need to find the value of a by substituting another point that's not an x-intercept into it. In these cases, I just substitute the y-intercept because that was the other point that I had. And then once you've got the value of a, you just substitute that back in to find the final cortic that represents the polynomial that we've got here.